Okay, welcome back to part two. In this part, I will show you how to set up the case in OpenFoam and then run it. The first step is to navigate to the appropriate directory. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'm just going to copy over the mesh from this file and then so I can create a folder in the Sonic Foam section. I'm doing an RAS simulation. Now I'm just going to show you the method of how I initially set up a, a case. So what I do is look for preloaded tutorial examples or previous examples that I've done and find one that best matches the case I want to run. In this case, I'm going to look at the prism case and see that the boundary conditions are more or less similar to what I want to use. So I'm not going to use the top or bottom wall condition, but the prism wall is similar to the wall condition I want to use, and the default faces matches the front and back condition. We've got an outlet in there and an inlet, which I can use. Look at the thermophysical properties. These seem to be what I want to use as well. So I'm just going to copy the case. And I'm just going to rename it Nozzle Video and add my mesh into the folder. Now I'm just going to delete some of the solution files from when I previously ran this case and the results file. And finally delete the mesh. Okay, now we're going to change the directory into the nozzle video folder. And finally, translate the mesh from Fluent to OpenFoam. And as you can see, it seemed to be successful. And we're going to now check our boundary conditions. and then load all of the files that we're gonna to need to change. I'm just going very fast through this process and in an upcoming section, I will show you each file that I ended up using. So here they are. Here's my boundary file, my thermophysical properties file, my control dictionary that I use, my alpha T, epsilon, K, new T, 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 and U. And now we just run the case. And save our results. Now we can finally just load our results in Paraview. And that's our final time step. I'm going to run this case for a little bit longer. So I need to change the start from to the latest command. That way it starts from our last time step that we calculated and not from zero. I'm just going to change the end time. Now I'm going to run the case and stop it. And as you can see, it is running from our last save time step. Now just let it run. And 
and that's it. The case is done. Finally, save the results again and display all the saved results that we have. Now we can just reload our results to see the new time steps that we just calculated. You can change the appropriate color map and post-process how you normally would. You can always save an animation. I'd like to create a new folder and save the animation as PNG images and then create an animation from that. I just find that this is a little bit more of a stable method for me. I often have issues trying to save the animation directly from Paraview. So I'm just going to cancel because I already saved the animation. And that's it. If you followed all of the steps I've outlined in this video, you should have successfully performed a basic CFD analysis on a CD nozzle. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Part 3 will simply show the results from a much finer and much larger domain simulation I ran. The simulation had the exact same boundary conditions I showed in this video. The only difference was that my time step size was different and my saving frequency was different, but that should be pretty easy to figure out. If you want access to all my files, again, you can check down in the description down below a link to a GitHub repository with this example from the video that I just showed and the more fine and larger domain mesh file. Feel free to run this, but I do warn that this took me a few days and produced around 400 gigabytes of data. So just be warned of that. Stay tuned for part three. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here.